Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here, and welcoming back to our studio is Sean Frey. Hey. Sean, good to see you. Yeah, Welcome awesome back. to be back. Oh my gosh, so Sean, of course, is the CEO, co-founder of Looking Glass. Uh, you guys make holographic display devices. We followed you guys for like a decade Thank now. I <laughs> uh, love your products, yeah. the Looking Glass portrait that you guys shipped like three years ago yeah. now. Desktop device to look at these you know, multi-view, almost light field images, representations of the portrait photos I take with my iPhone, mm -hmm. one of my favorite devices of that year. Thank you. So cool. And you're bringing a new device now to market soon. What is this? Uh, this is the Looking Glass Go. And as you could tell from the name and kind of the form factor, it's the first portable holographic display so that folks can finally take holograms with them, show friends and family. Uh, it also connects up to Wi-Fi, so it's a lot easier to share some of this new spatial content that people are making. So you guys have, over the years, tried so many different ways to present three-dimensional imagery, holograms, uh, in a way, in a, like a desktop format, right? right? In a way that people can not only uh, create them, share them, but just view them. And you guys have locked onto this like multi-view display, essentially. That's to, right. To recap, can we talk about how this display works and sure. how it might be different than what was in like the portrait? Sure. So, I mean, the fundamental principle is the same. It's just at a different level of holographic uh, pixel density. Um, so the holograms end up appearing a lot more lifelike and a lot more vivid. Um, we've also changed how um, the, the system works. Um, now it's a very thin format. Yeah, um, the display. portrait was a display recessed in like a frame. That's right. And so that's sort of the accumulation of a lot of software and hardware enhancements over the last three years that have allowed us to finally generate a sort of wafer thin um, holographic display that can generate a large amount of uh, volume from that thin wafer. And the experience is such, it's really hard to communicate. I know in a, <laughs> in a 2D frame, in a 16 by 9 yeah. YouTube video, but because you know we have two eyes, we see right. images in stereo, as I move my head laterally around your displays, you're presenting not just two images at once from my left and right eye, you're presenting a whole series of images. Yeah, many dozens of images up to 100. Mm. And that gets to a closer approximation for how we experience the real world. We're, when we're next to each other here, or that space guy in the corner is um, reflecting light from around the world, it feels real to us because we're getting rays of light into our eyes and processed by our brains at different angles. And that's what the looking glass software and hardware basically do, um, reproduces all of the angles and directionality of rays of light so that we can simulate reality for groups of people without them having to put on a headset. When you say up to 100 images, that's like 50 pairs, how does that compare to your, your viewing angles mm -hmm. of the portrait? You know, what are the differences? You said it was higher pixel density, but just from the, the experience, how does that compare? Yeah, it's about the same viewing angle. So it's about 60 degree um, viewing angle. Um, but in terms of the pixel density, it's about twice mm. what it is on the portrait or any of our uh, multi-viewer holographic displays out there. Um, we're the only company that makes a uh, multi-viewer sort of headset-free experience. And so this is, we think, going to be the first system that a lot of folks get and have a very, very, very high quality holographic experience with. As I recall, there were some trade-offs you had to make You know, when you want to go for a lot of views versus right. you know, resolution, and you could compensate for that in, in some software, the way you're processing the images. Um, what are you doing here in, in, to, to get that pixel density? Is it just a higher display in the background? or That's a big part of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we just have a denser display in the background. Um, our optics um, have gotten refined over the last three years. Um, we've figured out some additional software tricks to bump up the perceived quality mm. of the um, holograms. We also tie this together with a lot of um, new ways for folks to use their phone to generate holographic content. So yeah. it's not only a higher level of quality of hologram now, it's something that anyone can do. You don't have to be a programmer, you don't have to be a 3D modeler to start making content. It sounds like you want to reduce that friction. The, the path from taking a photo with the phone, the cameras that you already have, That's to right. be able to view them on this. Because with the portrait, it was super easy. I already with like an iPhone, capture a photo or even generate some type of video and, and then process that on a desktop software, plug it over USB, create a playlist, and play that back, what's the experience like here? So we just removed three of those steps, basically. So now you can just take your phone, um, take a photograph, and then our software in the background 
generates a depth map and then generates a hologram in a few seconds that then is wirelessly sent to your Looking Glass Go. And so you're, that's what the built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is here. No need to have an intermediate PC that you're plugging into. That's right. We found, even in our own team, that it was a little bit too cumbersome to have to always load up new content by plugging it in to your computer. So now that these are cloud-connected, Wi-Fi-connected devices paired together with this cloud-based mm. um, depth generation uh, system in the background, um, it'll be a lot easier to make holograms and share them. I, I'm loving this form factor. <laughs> I love that there's a hinge here Thanks. that you can absolutely you know, just change your angle. It's way more compact. Right? I know previously you tapped into Raspberry Pi platform, right. compute. Looks like it's all your own custom PCB here. All, all custom, yeah. Wow. And, and I also really like this, this clear, <laughs> the clear one's factor. For you, yeah. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> Love that design. Um, these prototypes you haven't plugged into a USB battery pack um, is the idea that you still need to you know, plug them into some type of battery pack, right? Yeah, we'll have a battery accessory that folks can buy. Um, that's pictured here, this little gumstick sort of battery mm, pack. Mm. Um, and the only difference between these prototypes that um, I brought here to the studio and what we'll ship to folks is that the USB-C is in the back. Mm. And so you'll be able to plug in that optional battery pack into the back. Uh, one of the things that we could also do with the previous uh, portrait device was plug it into, you know, via USB and HDMI into right. a computer and use it for, you know, viewing 3D models or games or other applications. People, your community has generated all sorts of cool stuff mm -hmm. with Looking Glass, uh, the, your platform, as well as even like real-time, you know, imagery with like a, with a, like a, one of the connects, right. right? Yeah, will that still be possible? Yeah, ab this? absolutely. Um, first and foremost, it's a cloud-connected system. So for holographic images, that's something that we expect most folks to be sort of sharing wirelessly and loading onto their system over Wi-Fi. But for folks who want to go even deeper and run some interactive applications or make their own, the USB-C port also um, supports data as well. So it's uh, okay. USB-C bolts DP. So mm. basically you can plug it into any of the newer Macs with M1 or M2 or M3, yeah. or most laptops as well into your USB-C port. Yeah, even iPhones, that's USB-C. That's right. That has DP out. So yeah. Theoretically, you can Who knows what folks will do with that? Oh, yeah. very cool. OK, <laughs> yeah. that's neat. Um, I mean, obviously, over the past couple of years, you have miniaturization in hardware, improvements in supply chain for things like to, to build this form factor. Yeah. But it seems like one of the big changes is on the software side and development in computational photography, right. things that you couldn't even imagine 10 years ago being possible. Like we thought to get a 3D image, to get a process, you needed a depth map, or you needed some type of photogrammetry, or right. extra layers of information. You're telling me now with you know AI processing, you know with the rise of things like neural radiance fields, right. things can happen more seamlessly. So we don't need to capture all that information. That's right, and all with your phone. So there's really um, there's the super duper easy way to make holograms with your phone, and there's the slightly more advanced, but really capable way that you can take scans of environments or people. And so um, what I was just describing before of taking a single photograph and we generate the hologram in the background in a few seconds, that's something that we expect a lot of folks to be doing on a daily basis, sort of getting to the 20 or 30 photos that you take in your daily life. Um, yeah. Now those will be holograms. And those are but, photos that don't need depth data. That's right, because we just generate it in the background. Right. Any photograph, even an archival photo mm -hmm. of you know, a Polaroid of maybe when you were a kid and, yeah. uh, you know, and had a birthday party. Mm -hmm. Now we can turn that into a hologram for the Looking Glass Go. Um, there is a level up if folks want to go even deeper, which is this field of spatial photography using these new techniques like NERFs, the neural radiance mm -hmm. fields that you're talking about, or even the super newest ones like Gaussian splats, mm. which is a nerdy term for something that basically means a, a point cloud that you can generate with a phone that um, changes the way each of those points look based on how you look at them. And that ends up letting you capture all of the detail and sort of magic that makes the real world real, including like how light bounces off of things. And the looking glass is an output device that can output those types. And we're, we've been lucky to be working with our friends at Luma AI, um, which has a platform for processing any video into basically a 3D scene using any phone, Android or iPhone. And the idea that you don't need to have 
hundreds or thousands of sample images like you do, would do with uh, traditional photogrammetry. That's right. Um, what, is there a sweet spot right now for how, how many images to get something good looking on the looking glass uh, go? Uh, I typically do it with a video. So yeah. I shoot a few seconds of video at 60 frames per second. Yeah. Um, and so I've shot hundreds of these over the last few months. Yeah. And because we now have this web viewer, um, with Luma AI to run in the Looking Glass Go, we've started to pull those in as holograms and share them. And so the workflow is you capture those in a couple seconds of video, you upload it to the platform, it over Wi-Fi then displays there yeah. after a little bit of processing time. That's right. You can edit it to get the framing you like, and then you mm -hmm. save a holographic screenshot, and then you can send that over Wi-Fi. Very cool. And that just gives you the extra bit of imagery that you wouldn't get with a static photo. Yeah, it's um, just two two levels. Mm -hmm. So one is the you know instant spatial photo, if yeah. you will, and the other is sort of more the entire 3D scene capture. Mm. Um, and I expect this is something that sort of photo nerds are gonna get into, like us in the team, um, to start. But very quickly over the next few weeks and few months, I expect to see a lot of folks around town um, doing these scans because it doesn't require a special 3D scanner anymore, it doesn't um, require hours to process, yeah. and you can do it with your phone. And so we've um, built in enough support into the Looking Glass Go to support these like super duper new techniques. This just came out a few months ago. Very cool. Um, and then what's next beyond that? What's next? You can uh, also run holographic apps as well. So um, there's a lot of apps that our community has made over the years, as you're mentioning. Um, one of the exciting newest ones is sort of a holographic chat GPT app mm. called Lightforms. And so you can design your own character um, or generate it from a single photo, because now we're doing that type of thing. Um, and then in a few minutes, you can have a character that you designed, no 3D modeling required, no programming required, that you can chat with that's backed by ChatGPT. So as a front end, it's a visual front end, but again, being a more interactive, yeah. more immersive, because it's a hologram. It's an embodiment. Yeah, it's embodiment. like a, instead of a physical robot embodying yeah. it, it's a holographic embodiment. Uh, do you know anything about, do you know this guy Norm from Tested? Norm from Tested? Oh, sure do. He's that fellow with a knack for gadgets and gizmos, always elbow deep in everything tech. I admit, he's not too bad <laughs> for a non-bunny. That is, next thing you know, he'll be inventing a carrot peeler that doubles as a rocket ship. Um, so people who have the Looking Glass portrait who've already done the processing, generated those quilts of you know videos yeah. or images, will all that be compatible? With Absolutely, 100% compatible. And so you, if you have an iPhone, if you have you know depth imaging, you can always if you don't want to you know necessarily upload the image, That's right. you can directly um, just run that locally. Um, and then for people who you know want to very quickly, you know, generate uh, whether it's a flat, uh, with a single flat image right. or uh, something with a Gaussian splat. Like, is that a service that will be offered? Is that a subscription service? Yeah, so that's a service. And so um, there's a lot of free stuff that folks get already on that platform in terms of a certain number of holograms that they convert each month, certain amount of time to chat with uh, light forms, as mm -hmm. an example. And as part of this um, pre-order campaign that we're doing for the product, we're going to give folks even more. Um, so that's part of our Looking Glass Plus subscription. Um, and so they'll get up to 100 uh, hologram conversions per month mm. um, and more time talking with uh, the holographic chat GPT characters and a bunch of other features like privacy features and whatnot. Very cool. Um, and then so this is you know hardware launching. Uh, you guys are have these prototypes, it's going to happen, right? You guys are launching Kickstarter. That's but right. What's the timeline for these um, to, to ship? Uh, so um, we'll be shipping in June. Um, there's a tiny number of sort of early advanced beta units, um, partner units, I think is what we're calling them, um, that'll ship in February. Um, but that's a, a small number. Um, for the main um, batch, that'll ship in June. Um, and we'll be shipping basically in the order that folks place the place their order. Mm -hmm. um, and so if folks place their order earlier, then they'll get the Looking Glass Go earlier. Very cool. And for you as you know, someone who makes hardware, I mean, it's, it's really impressive that you guys have iterated so much of different types of hardware over the years. What's been the most challenging part? What, what do you see as the, the, the parts that get you excited about um, in, you know, going forward for 
this version, next version, um, for the administration displays? Is right. the software the most exciting part for you now? What's, what's exciting for you? Um, I mean, it's equal parts software and hardware. Now I'm really excited that a lot more folks who aren't just 3D nerds like me are going to be able to um, enjoy holograms with their friends and family and make them super easily. Um, so I would say that's the most um, transformative difference with the Looking Glass Go launch. Of course, I'm super excited about how good the holograms look now with that additional pixel density. Um, in terms of the, the challenges, um, it's always challenging making new hardware. We've iterated on this over the last, really actually the last five years. Mm. Um, we built a prototype that we gave to the guy who started and runs the Looking Glass Club in Tokyo five years ago. Um, I just saw him last week. And um, it's been a long road since then to make the systems very thin. That was a big blocky system. So make the systems very thin, high performance, and to be able to work on Wi-Fi um, paired with all of our software. So it's kind of like all of the above makes it challenging, but we're through all of that development process and excited for folks to get these now. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for bringing these prototypes, Sean. It's great to catch up with you and see you after these past couple of years. And we're very excited for yeah. the launch of thank the Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Great to see you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for watching that video. Your support allows us to make more of this great content. If you'd like to help us on a deeper level, even head over to tested-store.com because we've got stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? Our anime-inspired tested logo in Japanese. Follow the process, not the plan. It's not a process. It's not a problem to solve, it's a process to manage other aphorisms that have come from my mouth. Um, and we have just made a full set of our demerit badges in sticker form. So you can cover your toolbox with all of your screw-ups and celebrate it with other makers. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.